Hey guys, Fishmonger here. Uh, it's going to be a quick video um, basically showcasing some of the uh, latest updates on the Hive operating system and their web interface, which I got to say is very much improved uh, compared to what they had before. It's a really, really streamlined uh, a, a setup, and I, I really do like it, and I do recommend it. Um, and also, I'm going to go over uh, what I'm mining right now, what's in my rigs, and then basically what my plans are for the future with mining, if there is a future. <laughs> So what you can see up on the screen right now is uh, the summary screen for Hive OS. You can see I got two workers rolling. I'm doing 16 GPUs in those two workers, pulling about 1.3 kilowatts of power, uh, mining Bitcoin gold right now at a smashing 467 solutions per second for all 16 GPUs. Um, and you can see it's the EquiHash algorithm. I got a zero dollar balance that's on Hive OS, um, which doesn't really mean anything. Uh, and then basically you can see the two rigs I got down here, a uh, little bugger. Uh, it's basically a, a four card rig, so you can see by the four little green guys here. And let me see, I can actually give you a little bit more of a summary. Um, my four cards I'm rolling are all GTX 1060s. These are the three gigabyte versions. They're pulling anywhere from 26 to 27 solutions per second for Bitcoin Gold. The whole rig itself is about 104 solutions per second here, you can see. Um, and then basically the other rig, the Bahama Mama rig, um, is running... Uh, a lot more. It's got, let me see, 8 plus 2 is 10, and then 212 cards. So I got 12 cards all together. Two of them are 1070 Ti's. Uh, one of them is a P106 mining card. I got a regular 1070 in here. And then eight of the super clocked 1060s. These are from EVGA. Um, you can see they are running the 1060s again from like 26 to 27 to 28 solutions per second. 1070 Ti's. I got them doing about 46 to 44. My 1070 is at 41, and then my mining card, the P106, is about 28. Altogether, the rig is uh, 373 solutions per second, which is why my total for everything is 471. Now, you may ask yourself, why am I mining Bitcoin Gold? Well, it just so happens I came over to Mining Pool Hub the other day and took a look and saw that Bitcoin Gold was the most profitable coin to mine. So, I just figured, what the hell, let's do that. I can auto exchange over to something else, in this case, Bitcoin. I'll let it roll for Bitcoin Gold for a little bit and just kind of see how it comes out. I am not usually the kind of person to swap coins to chase profit, but when you have this much of a difference between Ethereum, which is what I was normally mining, um, and then basically Bitcoin Gold, I figure it would be worth to uh, swap over and kind of take a look at it and see how I can come out. Um, Ethereum has been tanking lately. It's actually back up, I want to say up to 204, but it's back up to 204, whereas before it was actually dipping around 190 for a while. And I know a lot of people right now, you know, you're hovering around the, is it profitable to mine uh, in time because of power consumption? And for a lot of people, it's not. It's not profitable to mine um, for a lot of people just because power is too much. Not everybody has cheap power um, and it it costs too much to run it. You just It's not worth it at that point. I mean, you're basically, it's a zero-sum game. You're not making any money. Um, it just so happens that where I live um, and the place that I'm renting right now, that electric is built into the rent. So while I'm technically paying for my electric, um, I'm not paying any more or any less if I have my rigs on or off. So might as well have the rigs on. I'll be making money, and I essentially look at it as all profit at that point. So I have a zero cent kilowatt hour uh, fee. So all the money I'm making every single month is just straight profit, and I cannot complain about that. So while that's the case, I'll still be mining. Even if I was making $50 a month, it'd still be profit, and I'd still be mining. So coming back to a Hive OS over here, um, you know, I do like the way that they actually changed this new setup um, compared to the way it used to be in some of my other videos you can compare it to. Um, it's a lot nicer of a setup. For instance, you have your wallets here. Um, I have uh, my wallet set up. This is, these are basically my mining pool hub wallets. Um, and I got a nice hash wallet here. This is my nice hash address. Um, essentially, all you have to do is just say what coin you want to roll and then basically the address. Um, and then basically you can name it something and then that's basically it to set up your wallet, which is really nice um, They got these things called flight sheets, which are essentially like the coins and the pools that you want to mine on 
So if I come down to this guy here, and if I edit this just to show you, um, this is, I call it the Mona coin, but really it's like Mona and Vert coin, and it's the Lyra 2. Um, and basically I'm mining that on my Fishmonger wallet, which is on Mining Pool Hub. Um, all I had to do is select Mining Pool Hub, and it automatically told me um, the pool server name and everything like that. I manually changed, I clicked on advanced and manually changed this to 17018 for the port, which is the auto switching port. So it's going to auto switch on all the coins that are on, on that algorithm. Um, but then as far as the miner goes, basically just selected CC miner and I'm running the Alexis fork. Um, basically it's the Lyra 2 hash algorithm. Everything else was set up all automatically. Didn't have to change a dang thing. Um, I named it the Lyra 2 Mining Pool Hub Auto Swap. That's just kind of what I threw it in there. Um, so you can see here it's named Lyra 2 Mining Pool Hub Auto Swap. So if I want to, very quickly, all I got to do is come over to, let's say, my little bugger rig. If I want to actually swap this over to have it stop mining this coin and mine something else, just come over to the flight sheet, and I can say, all right, let's say I want to do Ether. And I want to do ETH on the nice hash wallet. Well, I don't want to do ETH. Let's say I want to do ETH on uh, Mining Pool Hub. Just click on the little rocket. And then bam, it's going to update the worker. The worker's getting sent the new configuration information, which is the fact that it's now going to be doing, uh, again, Mining Pool Hub is connecting to this, and it's going to be switching over to uh, Ethereum. And the neat thing is, it is also going to automatically change the overclocking on it. Because on the overclocking, I want to say it's a tab. It's not really a tab over here. But when you click on this, you can set up clocks or, or, auto, or you can set up overclocks for the rig for the algorithm. So for instance, this is my clock setup that I've got right now for when I'm mining Ethereum or anything on the uh, the Ethash algorithm. Uh, I got my fans set to 80, my cores are underclocked, my memories are overclocked, and then basically these are my power levels on the cards. So this is actually what the card is rolling, and then you can see here, I automatically now it updated the information, and I have it set to do a 30 second uh, update automatically where it's pulling information from Claymore. I'm getting 94 mega hash per second. These are the hashes on the individual cards. Um, and then basically these are the temperatures and the fan speeds. Um, you can also see the power over here. It's 321 watts right now for all four cards. Um, and then basically this is the information is presenting as far as what has been happening with the rig. So I updated the settings for NVIDIA and then basically the rig config changed. I can clear that just by clicking on that. Um, so I got to say that the setup here is, it's real nice. I mean, it was that simple. I just, once you set everything up, you just pop it over just like that. You could swap algorithms. You can swap things around. You can change, you know, your overclocking. Very similar to before. For instance, if I wanted to change my, my Ethereum overclock, you can click on the little edit here. And like, uh, let's say card number three or GPU number two, I click on this. It actually tells me what the card is. Um, so there's no guessing as far as what you're editing with the cards now. It tells you what those cards are. These, all four cards of these are pretty much all the same because they're all GTX 1060s. This is the Superclock card, which is why it's actually running a little bit higher. These three aren't. Um, but for instance, if I come over to uh, the Mining Expert, if I look at overclocking, it's very helpful to have the name here. So for instance, if I click on this 110 watt power limit, you can actually see that's my GTX 1070. If I click on this 135 watt power limit, it's telling you it's the 1070 Ti. So it tells you, not only it tells you what you're setting your power limit to in the card name, but it actually tells you what it's currently running at the moment and gives you a little summary. So you can see it's actually 80% fan because I got it locked to 80% and it's uh, 45 degrees. So if you wanted to tweak your, let's say your fan settings and stuff like that, if you wanted to tweak them per card, all you gotta do is come in and you can say, like for instance here on this card, well, I've got my fan set to 80%, but it's only running, it's running at 60 degrees. So I can actually lower my fan speed because I have a little bit of headroom on my temperature there. Um, same with this one, same with this one, same with this one. So I don't have to run 80% fan on all of them. I just do that. You can actually very easily tweak the fan speeds to match your temperatures just in the overclocking settings here screen without having to go back and forth and take a look at your overview screen and stuff like that. Um, so they made a lot of little tweaks like that that really make um, this, the whole updated Hive OS really, really nice. So I got to say, I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. And like I said, I do recommend this uh, for anybody who's uh, looking to get into some mining with Linux. Um, it's, it's simple. It's, uh, it's, it's a hell of a lot more, it makes a lot more sense. It's actually funny, somebody made a comment on one of my videos, I think it was John, I, I forgot your name, but about how a lot of the suggestions I made, they actually implemented into this, and I'm sure it wasn't because of me, it's just because it just makes a lot more sense. 
like you can set your overclocks to match algorithms and you can set this per rig so every time you swap around or make any changes it doesn't affect every single rig because that's the way it used to be it was a major pain in the ass you have to set everything up twice if you have rigs that don't match and it was just it was a it was a major pain so i'm going to go back to bitcoin gold here i'm just going to click on my little rocket ship it's going to set this up uh, let's see if i can actually come in here and take a look at um, let's see if I can look at the rig real quick. Hang on a second. So you can see this is the uh, little bugger rig right now that just swapped over um, to the uh, EWBF miner. It's uh, you can see the information is pulling here. Uh, it's doing mining pool hub. There's the port. There's the four cards, the GTX 1060s, and then basically it's giving me the little updates here on the power usage and all that good stuff. So um, you know that successfully just uh, swapped over. That simple. So. With all that being said, what am I planning on doing in the future? Well, you know, I got that whole new VR system uh, set up in my computer here. And right now I'm only running a GTX 1050 in my main computer. I really do want to get one of my 1070 Ti's out of uh, my mining rig and plop it into my main computer so I can actually do some really nice VR and some real nice gaming uh, here now. I'm probably going to wait a little bit longer, you know, so I can make a little bit of profit on this stuff. Um, and then, you know, I don't know, moving forward, I guess... As long as I'm not paying for electric, I'm still making some decent profit, so might as well keep rolling with it. You know, it's funny, though, because I do sell, tell myself, I, I made a choice a long time ago before I set all these rigs up. I said, do I want to invest in mining stuff and mining rigs um, and do all that, or uh, do I want to invest in stock? And I went with the mining rigs. When I look back at that decision, I say to myself, you know what? I probably should have just went with the stocks, because if I did go with stock, it was going to be with AMD. Um, this is around the January, February time. Um, it was around $12 a share, right? So that was uh, pretty low compared to where it's at right now, which is $27. It actually just hit an all-time high here of uh, like $28.51. Uh, I say all-time, I mean like year-to-date high. Um, so that was uh, kind of a bummer. I had enough money to buy about 675 shares um, at the price in January. And had I done that and then sold now at the $28 mark, um, I'd have about $18,900 or approximately a increase of about $10,000 on my investment. So from January until today, had I invested in AMD instead of my mining rigs, I would have been positive $10,000 instead of just trying to figure out if I was, when I was going to be breaking even, because I'm getting to that point now, um, but Certainly, being positive $10,000 is a lot nicer than finding out when you're breaking even. And then, at that point, then moving forward, only making about $200 a month, uh, which is not quite a lot. So, um, yeah, look, they say hindsight's everything, 2020, this, that, and the other thing. Um, I, you know, what are you going to do? Can't shoot yourself in the foot over all those decisions that didn't quite work out. So, with all that being said, this is Fishmonger. I'm signing out. Catch you on the flip side.